I am about to tell you guys what happened. Something happened to me. I had communication with Melissa this morning. myself. So I just want to share my experience and uh, I'm nervous. I really, I really am nervous. But I want to share what happened. And I want to if this can help somebody. And, uh, you guys know biggest heartache that I could ever imagine. And so I've decided that with this, this is like a new beginning of my life because I never imagined my life without my baby. So this is brand new for me and I just can't imagine going on with without her. Melissa was such a major part of my everyday and it's hard for me to let that go and I think that the world you know the way that the world operates they want us to just let you know let things go keep moving everything goes really fast you gotta be here at this time you gotta do this this time you gotta talk to this person at this time you gotta there's so many different like I call it noise. There's so many different things that interrupt our days that we push things off and say that that was in the past. And I'm not ready to say, I am not ready to say that my baby is in the past. I mean, it was, it's almost been 10 months. And I can't, I can't believe I can't believe I'm still walking around. But then I can't believe that. I haven't seen or talked to my baby in 10 months. And I wasn't ready to let that go. And I don't care who out there, you know, thinks that it's time for me to move on. Yeah, okay. You can think that. But I'm not ready to move on. This person was a part of my life for a significant amount of time. This person was so important in my life throughout that entire time that just because something happened in the world, that made her have to be separate from the space that I'm in right now. Physically, I've been doing some research and studying lately. And I don't know, I think it's possible that I have been able to, how crazy, been able to and I think it's happening. And it's, I'm happy. I'm scared. I'm happy though. I never ever wanted to be without her. And I don't think I'm without her. I don't. I think that even though we can't physically be together, I think that we are still in the same space. And so I want to share what happened this morning. Again, I can't believe it myself. And my husband, <laughs> my husband, he can't believe it at all. But he was standing right there. <laughs> he did not see what I saw. But I know what I saw. And I was wide awake. And I was like, can you see it? Can you see it? And he was, no. What's wrong with you? And I was thinking, nothing. I'm happy. I'm happy. So, okay. This this might be a short little thing, but it's I know what I saw. Oh, oh first before I go into that, I'm a, I'm gonna talk about what I've been researching. I decided that I want to be enlightened. Now, spiritually. So I realized that when I talk to people, especially certain people, they just 
you know, they're so accustomed to getting, you know, get on with it, get get back to work, get back to life, get back to this and that and the other. So they don't hear me. So I had to do some research on my own. People kept telling me, since Melissa died, you need to go see somebody. You know, I know that. But that was the first thing I did. I was seeing somebody before Melissa died and talking about Melissa while I was going to see somebody. Because the girl was using the heck out of me. But that's okay. I loved every minute of it. I would do it again and give up every dime, every take the car. I don't care. Take the, take the house. Take me. Just don't leave me. Come back, you know. But so I was seeing somebody about Melissa before Melissa passed away. And once Melissa passed away, you know, they were giving me coping skills. I saw a therapist. I, I saw a counselor. I went and saw the grieving um, specialist. I guess it was the same person that I saw before um, at my husband's job. I went and saw, what did they call it, EOP or something. Um, so I don't know what it's called, something, family, something or other. Everybody has one if they have an HR package whatever. So um, I was talking to somebody about Melissa passing away and how I was just, I was crushed. I was, there was, I mean, I, I'm not a person who believes in, in suicide or anything like that, but I just couldn't see the, the point of living, not, not seeing myself dying, but what is out there in the world that means anything to me anymore? You know? Yeah, I've been hurt with this worse than I think anything possible. You know, so anything else that happens, I feel numb. I feel numb already. Before Melissa passed, I did not know what grief was, other than somebody I really love passing away. I'll show my little skinny eyes again. Where is father? Me. Uh, you know, my grandmother passed away. That crushed me. But it didn't feel like this. My 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 cousin passed away. That crushed me. But it didn't feel like this. My grandfather, my uncle, oh, my uncle, that was ooh, that got to everybody. It just still didn't feel like this. My father died when I was ten years old, and I love my father with all my heart. But it didn't feel like this. My brother died three months after Melissa died. It didn't feel like this. I love my brother. But nothing in this world ever hurt like this. I mean, I could have got hurt and I wouldn't feel like this, you know? I could have lost limbs and wouldn't have felt like this. I feel like my heart, my heart was taken out of my body. You know, that's the way I felt. When I got that phone call that my baby died, my heart was taken out, the, out, out of my body, and I felt like my heart beat slower now. You know, what, 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 what matters in me? Yes, I got two other babies. I, if, God forbid if anything happens to them, I got a husband, I got a mother. I, the pain is already there. That's what I'm saying. The pain is already there. What can I do but just feel numb? So that's that's the that's what I've been going through. And when I would sit down and talk to a counselor, therapist, whatever you want to call the person, um, what would get me is I would be sitting there for my 55 minutes, and that 55 minutes would go so fast. I mean, just if the time is up, and I'm telling you, I'm pouring my heart out to you. I'm telling you what's, what, how I feel. And you're looking at the clock every few seconds. Look at the clock. Look at the clock. And I'm like, whoa, are, are you even listening to me? And that's the problem. I, I feel like I'm not heard. And I have a lot to say So you, in any aspect of my life. So if, you feel, if I feel like you're not listening to me, then I feel disrespected and I don't have time for you. So I decided to do research on my own about grieving. And YouTube has really got a lot of information out there. I mean, it's in every direction uh, from, from point A to point Z, you know, 
They've got all types of information. You know, I only look at things or listen to things that are comfort comfortable for me. So I watch some videos on parents that have lost their children. And, you know, all age ranges, people that have lost little babies, people have lost, you know, older children, people have lost children the same age as my child. And looking at that helped me. Um, and I felt like I wasn't alone. And and that's that's important to me. Because even though I got family around me, I got my mom, I got my husband, I got my kids, they don't feel the same way that I feel. They everybody grieves differently. You know, I feel like if Melissa were here, she might have been the closest person that would have felt the type of pain that I felt. Because I feel like we were connected like that. We were connected to, to, to the point where it's, we, we could say things to each other and understand how each other feels. Or she might say something that, like, one of the things that she would say to me is be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. Now, you can hear that a thousand times in your life. But when it came from her, I stopped and I thought about, I really need to be careful what I wish for because it might just happen. I, I can even relate that to her passing. All she would say is, I want to be free. I want to be free. Oh, I just got to be free. And when she passed, the first thing I thought of, you wished for that. And you're more free than you could have imagined. You're more free than I would have imagined. So, you know, she's, she got what she asked for. And that's not a bad thing. It's just be careful what you ask for. And I, in this case, I asked for communication with my kids. I asked for communication with my baby dad. And I am certain that I got it. I'm so certain that I can't believe it myself. I don't have time to make this up. I cry myself to sleep every night for the past 10 months, nine and a half months. I cry myself to sleep to the point where my face is burning. My eyes are itching. I mean, it's, it's, I got dry tears on my cheeks right now. And it, I don't know how to change that other than to ask God to let me have some type of communication with my baby. Now, I got that idea from what I was researching. And what I decided to research was how to become awakened and understand that there is so much more to this life than what we give credit. There's so much more to this life. <laughs> that we can imagine. We don't know because there, we've been clouded with all this bogus information. I mean, you can look at a commercial and, you, I mean, there's a commercial with this girl putting on eye mascara stuff and she's just smearing it all on her eyes. Why is mascara so important? I'm plain as day. So watching that, it's just gibberish. It's garbage, you know. Okay, good. Somebody's making some money. I'm pro that, you know, but what I'm what I'm what I want to know is what else out there can I what what else does my brain allow me to do? You know, you go to school and you get information and they expect you to retain that information, the information that they're putting in front of you on this piece of paper, read it, know it, study it. Okay, but then they'll say, don't learn anything but this. This is the book I want you to read. You know, this is what I want you to know. Okay, that's fine. But there's more information beyond this. If we go back in our history, our history, okay, then 
our history is not in that book. Okay? That's important. You know, so the what what did they leave out? What did they take out? Somebody, I was talking to somebody earlier today, and um, they were saying, and actually I wasn't. I was looking at a, at a, at a video, a YouTube video, and they were talking about the, the information that was taken out of the Bible. Actually, I'm going to retract that. I was talking to my cousin, Eric. Eric. He was telling me what was taken out of the Bible. The, the whole book of Enoch. Now, I haven't researched. I haven't known. I don't know yet. I'm going to have to look at that myself. But he said that his thought process is, I'm going to go find that and I'm going to go learn that. Because what is it that they don't want me to know? Okay. You know, why did they take it out if it was there the whole time? Where are you taking it out now? So there's information. There's there's these parts of your brain that have knowledge from before you were born. And I believe that there are things that you can, you can learn in order to understand or be awakened to what is actually happening in this world. There's, you could talk to 100 people today, and that those 100 people will tell you, this is right here with you. Okay? If she's right here with me, why can't I talk to her? She can hear you. Okay. If she can hear me, why can't I get a response? That's what I asked for. I wanted to know, even after last week, what happened with the numbers. I wanted to know if I could communicate with her and, you know, it might not be right away or it might be right away. Can she communicate with me back? Now, I think I'm close. I think I'm close because I was going through something this morning. And I know what I saw. And I know my husband walked into the room and saw me reacting to what was real to me, what I saw, but he couldn't see it. Now, no Larry, he's a different type, he's different, way different from me. Opposites totally attract. Um, so I don't think he would open his mind to accept it. And that's fine, you know. But I was like, do you see that? Do you see that? I was screaming and happy and laughing and clapping and everything. I had I I was like, can you see it? He's like, no, I don't see nothing. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Larry, she's right there. Now, it wasn't the Melissa that I'm used to. Um, and when you start opening your mind and becoming awakened, my mother used the term woke or woke. Um, um, you you start understanding the energy, and it is it's energy. Melissa, like I said the other day, she is energy now, and I'm so happy. Ah! I know I, I'm already I'm already quirky. I'm okay. I'm all right. I'm happy because it's it's was it wasn't the end wasn't the end. On February 16th, it was not the end of our relationship. We have a whole new relationship now. I saw, Larry said that, because I couldn't remember afterwards. I knew something had happened. I knew something had happened. Um, and it was happening while I was woke. And it was happening before Larry came in the room. And as Larry was leaving the room, it stopped. Um, I saw a, a curtain. Larry said, I, saw, I told him, do you see the curtain? And it was like, it was black. It was, it was like, it was like an energy 
thing, Marissa. I can't explain it. I, I don't know. I wouldn't know a technical term to save my life. But there were colors. There were words. Now, one thing, these little skinny eyes, they they move slow. So I always said to Melissa, don't be asking me to read nothing fast. So I know I said that out loud. Don't I can't read fast. Stop. <laughs> and I was like, just and so the the image of Melissa was it was like a digital thing. It was like one dimensional, you know, and it was like her laughing and like her head went back and she just left, you know, but there was no sound. I couldn't hear anything, but I saw everything. And Larry was standing right there looking around. I don't see nothing. I don't see nothing. I'm like, she's right there. You can't tell me you can't see that. And I, I was like, I see it. I see it. Thank you. Thank, thank you, God, you know, for allowing me, you know, to have a connection anything as long as it's oh god you know a connection with my baby it's not over it's not over so i'm grateful i'm grateful and i you know what part of my request was every once in a while just so that it doesn't seem like she's gone forever if it can't happen every day, every night, that's fine. Just as long as it's of God. If God blesses me with the opportunity just to see her, and I don't want to see butterflies. I don't want to see dragonflies. I don't want to see no birds. I want to see my baby. My baby. The one that I'm used to. You know? Now, if she's not a physical, just give me something, Lord, please. And all you gotta do is ask. All you gotta do is ask and believe. I'd much rather, I, I really, I appreciate this from the bottom of my heart. And this is better than nothing. This is way better than just people randomly telling me. She's right there with you. Right. I don't want that. I want her. No. I, I believe that there, there is an afterlife. I believe that there is a, a dimension that we're not used to. We're not, we don't know how to tap into it. I believe that and I've always been this way. I mean, I've always been this way. It's it's not it's nothing unusual for me. I believe that people have the ability to communicate. You know, well beyond what I've gone through in these past few days. I'm grateful for anything. And it I I'm not making this up because Larry saw me. Now, knowing him, he would deny it. <laughs> but that would just be him being mean to me. <laughs> but he, we, when we, when he took me to the church today, um, I asked him, "What, what did I say I saw?" And he, he was able to reiterate what I was experiencing. Because I didn't believe it myself, you know. But the fact that somebody was actually there to witness. And now, just to give this uh, as an example, my mom, my mom believes also. And it was maybe March, no, it was May. I want to say it was May. I had gone to visit my mom. I was having a real rough night. Now, my mom had just moved out of my house and I wasn't used to her being not around. So I called her and it was probably about three o'clock in the morning. Called her and she didn't answer the phone. And so I got a little anxious. And then, you know, typically when mom was here, you know, it'd be three o'clock in the morning. I'd, 
I'd go to her room. Melissa would already be in her room. Lauren would be in her room. And we'd just be making a ruckus, you know. So I was lonely. So since Melissa passed, Lauren kind of stays in her own room now. And she talks on the phone to her friends a lot. They FaceTime stuff. And um, I was lonely, you know. Just lonely. And uh, there have been so many people who reached out to me. You know, right when Melissa passed. And the first thing they said is, if you don't need to talk to somebody, you can call me anytime, day or night. I don't want to put nobody out. I don't want to be a burden on anybody. You know, if anything, I want to help somebody. But I don't want to call and crowd somebody's shoulder, even though people still offer to this day. And I love you for that. I love you for that. That's a blessing. But I was used to a mom. And I was used to listen. I was used to Lauren, but Lauren, you know, she's doing her own thing. I, I'm here for her, and she's here for me. But three o'clock in the morning, it's not that easy. So I was calling my mom, and I was asking. Um, I was wanting to talk to her, ask to talk, to her, you know, just basically talk to her. She wasn't answering the phone, though. That's the point. And that got me all freaked out. So I decided to get up and go to her house. At three o'clock in the morning, I got up, I threw on anything, and I zoomed through the neighborhood, got to her, was banging on the window. Are you in there? You know, your car's out here. I'm worried. Open the door, open the door. She opened the door. She's like, What's wrong with you? I was like, Mom, I'm so miserable. I mean, I was just done, you know. And she's like, I'm okay, and you're okay. We're together. And, you know, she said, I talk to Melissa every day, you know, just talking to, I talked to Melissa's picture. I told y'all that already. You know, so she talks to Melissa's picture, too. And, and you know, we can only imagine so many people love my little girl. There's a lot of people out there, you know, hopefully, you know, her friends, they don't leave her out. You know, if her energy and spirit is around and she's involved in everything, you know. So, um, me and mom, we sat there, and I was like, I'm going home. You know, she's like, no, no, stay. I was like, I want to go home now. I know you're safe. I'm going to go home now. She's like, no, stay. I don't want you out there in the middle of the night. So, mom, I'm 45 years old. She's like, stay here. So, I was like, all right, I'll stay. So, I stayed, and I, I got a little comfortable on the couch. And uh, the next morning, I woke up. <laughs> This is the part that's, ooh. I was like, okay, really? You know, I woke up and went to the bathroom. Now I had to go past her doorway to go to the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom, and I was coming back out, walking past her doorway, and the lady was laying in the bed, eyes closed, talking, completely animated, screaming, Oh, baby, I'm so happy. And she was saying, Kobe, Kobe. Kobe is her dog. He died in December. So right before Melissa left in February, Kobe died. Kobe was my mother's best friend. I mean, she'd take that big fluffy dog everywhere. She would bring that dog over to my house before she moved in with us, bring the dog over to my house. I mean, the dog would be on top of stuff, eating stuff, touching stuff, barking and stuff. You know, she would walk the dog every every day. Uh, she would drive the dog around with her when she'd go to the grocery store and just everything. She loved that dog. The dog died really suddenly, and my mother was crushed. It was so hard breaking to see how much pain she was in. My mother is certain that on that day that I was at her apartment, that Melissa brought the dog to her. I can't do nothing but believe that she experienced that because I was standing on the outside of her door watching it happen. You know, I couldn't see what she saw. You know, I don't even know if her eyes were closed because I was on the outside of the door. 
all I know is she was laid back and she was like just reaching and laughing and grabbing. And Kobe was the kind of dog that he would just basically sit on top of her chest. I mean, she'd be laying in the bed and this, I don't know how many pounds, he might have been 25 pounds. This fluffy, gorgeous dog would just be all over her. So the fact that she was experiencing something that she was so familiar with didn't surprise me. If she, in her thought process, was seeing her dog. And she said Melissa was like standing back and just like, like, you know, then she was, and she was saying, thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. And not there's nothing wrong with that she's open to receiving that that message that opportunity to not feel that that her her in her case her dog and her granddaughter came to visit her it's beautiful it's beautiful and i say this to anybody who has lost somebody open up your mind, open up your heart, if you ask God to give you that blessing, it's, it's available to you. I believe that. I believe it, I believe it, I believe it. I saw my baby. I saw my baby. She she gave me colors. She gave me words that I, I you know, I'm going to be Melissa, you know, when I'm talking to her just regular every day. Because, again, I refuse to accept that she's gone forever. You can't do that. You can't leave me like that. We were too close. We were too close. You know, she would say things like, you know, Mom, I got this feeling that I shouldn't drive today. And I'm like, don't drive. Mm -mm. You know, and I, that's how we are in this household. My kids, you know, my husband. But it's like, Lauren, Lauren, just I'll put this out there. We have some type of connection to something. Lauren started experiencing um, these panic attacks, severe panic attacks. I want to say back towards November of last year. So you got to think of the timeline right before Melissa passed away. Lauren would have just a meltdown at school and she would call me screaming, crying, come get me, come get me. I got to get out of here. Something bad is going to happen. Something bad is going to happen. And I'm like, what? What's going to happen? And I believe her feeling. You know, just like if Melissa said, I don't think I should drive today. I don't think I should go out today. I believe her feeling. Stay home. Don't drive. Don't go. If you feel safer here, then that's what you do. So Lauren would she would be doing she would do now, now as a mom, it did cross my mind. Is something happening in school? Is a teacher bothering you? Is a kid bothering you? Then I had to say, hold up. No, I don't think so. <laughs> not with the teachers, not with the kids. So she ain't scared of nothing. And she's not, you know, she's a, she's just tough. Her exterior is like, can't, can't phase me. So it wasn't anything. I took this girl and on multiple occasions that I would have to go pick her up from school. One particular day, I took her to both a therapist and a counselor in the same day to try and help her figure out what's happening to her. Now, around that same time, Lauren was in this horrible car accident. Five, 17 year old girl in a car on Old House Fair, minding their own business. According to them, Another car zooming past them on Old House Ferry up by Barrington um, Clubhouse. This car ran them off the road. 
Now, so it ran them off the road and their car went airborne. Um, one of those middle things in the middle of the street that's got the, the signpost on it and it has some bushes lined up behind the signpost. And it's right there on the corner of Old Hawesbury and where the um, Barrington Downs Clubhouse is. They went from where the street had a uh, fork to make that turn onto the, where the clubhouse street is. They hit that, that middle thing flew up. They took out the sign. They took out a couple of the bushes. The car went up the hill because the, the clubhouse is on like a higher level. It went up the hill and stopped within an inch. An inch from the tree. So if it had hit the tree, who knows what would have happened. Now that same week and this is this is the neighborhood. You know, I'm sorry if, if this is something that's personal that affected anybody that's in this community. But that same week or the like the Friday before my daughter's accident in November of last year, um, I guess two boys were in a crash that died like further back on that street. Um, I can't say for certain where that it was, but I know that the police officer who was there with our daughters told us that that had happened. And, you know, the, the, not even to mention, and, and God forgive me, and people please forgive me, the two boys that, that passed away from the, the car crash over by Jamestown Mall, and, and God rest all of their souls. But Lauren was feeling something. Now, I, um, um, my particular si situation from that particular day, that day, I was at the Walmart in the parking lot. I had already shopped. I was sitting in the car getting ready to take off. Something told me, and you got to listen to that voice that's in your head. You can't hear it, but there's words that... It's like you can see them, but you can't hear them. Some people might say they hear them, but I see them more than I hear them. The words were prayed right now. This day, and it was like an hour before I got the call that one was an accident. I was sitting in that parking lot at the Walmart, and I heard Saul pray, pray right now. So I just stopped everything. I was sitting in the parking lot, and I just started praying over my children. I prayed each one of their names. Bless them. Keep them safe, Lord. I need you to cover my children with a hedge of protection right now. I didn't know the term hedge of protection um, before one of Melissa's best friends from her, her younger days, um, Tiasia, um, she's an adult now, and I'm proud of her. Um, her mom said, put a hedge of protection on your children. And because I would always say, I don't like it when Melissa goes to sleepovers, da, da, da. but I would have sleepovers all the time. Oh, oh yeah, you could bring your kids, but I can't send my kids. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, but I was, I was that mom. It's like, I have to keep my eye on these kids, you know. <sighs> so the, the, the mom said, put a hedge of protection on your children. And because, and you know, at that time frame, they were like fifth grade or something, and they would want to go to the Savoy for the Dare Dance, the Savoy in Fer Ferguson. And I'm like, oh, she can't go to the Dare Dance, not unless I go with her. And I went, you know, I'd be dancing. Melissa would say, Mama, they gave me a circle. And I'm like, oh, they gave you a circle. <laughs> so. Oh, um, she would be so excited to get a circle. And um, so I, I would show up at the dances. One time I had a dance battle with Melissa's friend, Bianca's mother. Uh, I think it was a fifth grade dance. They were, I guess it was a last dance. And um, we had a, a, a dance battle. We were pop locking or whatever that stuff was. Um, so 
my point. Um, the hedge of protection over your kids. So I asked for a hedge of protection over them kids. And it wasn't an hour later that Lauren was in this crazy car accident. This accident was so crazy. The whole bottom of that car was all the way from where they had first encountered the car that ran them off the road. Pieces of that car was just scattered all over the ground. The sign, they, nobody even realized that the sign that they took out was gone until I found the pole all been up under the car and the piece of the, the actual sign like down the street somewhere. I took pictures of everything. And at, at once we got, once I got there and I saw how bad it was, of course, when she called me and said, it's okay. Um, nothing's really, the car is just messed up. We all right. I didn't, I called my husband. I was like, did you hear what I was in car He was like, yeah, she all right. She said she was all right. I get there and there's pieces of car everywhere. I'm surprised that nobody got hurt. Seriously, somebody had a bruise or something, but the car was demolished. The front of the car was way dented in. It was total. The car was total. They didn't hit the tree. Thank you, Jesus. And I believe the prayer helped. Then the little girl who was driving, she had just got that car. It was brand new, all right? For her birthday, I want to say September. See, September, I'm not certain. So September, October, November, okay? Brand new car. She said that her grandfather was a preacher. And they blessed the car. This girl, she said, I got a Bible in the back seat. Now, at the, at the end of the accident, everybody was like, how'd the Bible get in the front seat? There's five girls in the car, all right? So it's three in the back seat, it's two in the front. The Bible on the floor in the back seat ends up like close to the dashboard of the front seat. You know they flew, you know what I'm saying? So that's, and she was like, I pray over my, you know, so that I'd be safe in this car. They were safe. That's all I need. While we were standing there and all the mothers came, because I might have been maybe the second mother on the scene, and it was, you know, a whole bunch of parents at the end of it. I said, every one of y'all grab hands. I mean, these kids. I asked them, did y'all pray? Y'all got to pray right now. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God that you were all safe. Because you didn't have to be. You know, you didn't have to survive this. But you did. You did. And all of us mothers, we all grabbed hands. And I wasn't the preacher. I'm not the preacher. I'm not. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know if there's a call in or anything like that. I'm not the preacher. There was preachers on the scene. The grandfather was there. You know, thank the Lord. But we, we all needed to embrace and talk to God at that moment for his grace. Because it didn't have to be that she, my daughter was saved. Because you see, months later, my other daughter was taken. You know, Lauren's anxiety, we feel in this household that her anxiety was preparing her, okay? Her anxiety was preparing her for something that she had never experienced before. And I, I accept that because I feel like there, there was a timeline of the events that took place up to my daughter's passing. There's, there's a clear timeline of things that happen to, to let us brace ourselves. You know, nobody expected anybody to, to die. But we were already going through the anxiety of something that when it actually happened, we all had a cool head and we were able to make it through. It wasn't a shock if that makes sense. It wasn't a shock. Because if it had been a shock, one of us could have had a heart attack from, from finding out that this happened. You know, 
uh, anything could have happened. But there was there was anxiousness leading up to the actual thing that took place. And and Lauren was real just she was level. You know, she was everybody was hurt. Everybody was hurt. But she was able to keep herself together. And I, I'm I'm proud of her. I, I'm I'm shocked that I kept myself together. I did not expect that of me. You know, I didn't expect that of me. To be able to be able to see my baby like that. I think the belief and the trust and the faith that I have, I understand that God has a time for us to be born, a time for us to leave this earth physically, because our bodies, our bodies are not meant to withstand all of this. It can't survive it. But our spirit, spirit is eternal. Our spirit is eternal. Our spirit will live, live forever. Thank you, Jesus. My baby is in spirit now. And she's able to communicate with me. I just have to be open to accept it. You know, and I'm I'm happy. I'm happy. Today I was bubbly, energized. I mean, I, it, it, I, I, I cried when I when I was trying to make the decision to make this video because I was nervous. I was nervous. I don't like being nervous like that. No, no, you know. But I was, I was started shaking, <laughs> you know. Oh. And y'all seen those faces that I make like when Melissa got on the back of a motorcycle? Oh, <laughs> that's how I felt. <laughs> but now I, I, I feel better, you know. Just to think that there's something. She's not gone. She's around, you know. And when when she has the opportunity to peep in, poke in, you know, I can receive it. And I'm open to do that. As long as it's of God, I don't want anything negative. No, I've had some crazy dreams, you know. And I, I honestly probably don't think they're dreams now. There's been times that I, I, you know, laying next to my husband in bed, and I wake up ah, screaming, jumping, and trying to climb over him because do you see that man right there? <laughs> and he's like, no, what you talking about? Same, same expression, same uh, reaction. But I'm like, that man right there. <laughs> I am not playing. It happened. So, too many times, too many times, kicking and screaming and trying to get away. That what the heck is that? It's somebody right there. Now, I mean, I, I, it's it's real to me. Everybody don't have to believe it. Don't matter. You know, I believe it. I believe that my baby communicated with me. I'm happy. You know, it feels so much better to feel this way than to be sitting in my bed crying like a lover and idiot. You know, Ooh, what am I do? If she's, if I can carry her with me everywhere I go, then I, I don't feel alone. Who wants to be alone? You know? And I don't, I don't need twenty million people around me either. I I want so if this can help somebody if if somebody you know is interested in opening their mind to just understanding that we're not here by ourselves I mean I, just just the understanding that point blank period 
God is watching you all day, every day. All right? So do good by him. You're going to answer for it one day anyhow. You know, so if God is watching you, you know, and he has angels and there's this, we all believe, a lot of us believe that there's people on the other side. The other side of what? We don't know. But if they are there, if they communicate with us, I mean, then you'd be like, oh, I saw a ghost. All right. But if you ask to speak to your loved one, is that not just a blessing from God? And it, it feels good. I'm, I'm not going to take this in vain. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to not appreciate it. I'm just sharing what, what I experienced and, you know, I, I don't want anybody to just be um, just miserable because somebody that they lived with, somebody that they experienced life with is gone. I'm, I'm starting to believe that they're not gone. I, I really believe that they are on a level that is so intelligent that we just can't understand. Because I started this by saying that we have been dumbed down. You know, they only give us the information that they want us to, to have. But there's so much more information out there. You know, why are they keeping it for themselves? been watching a lot of uh, YouTube videos on this group um, called something about Swedenborg. I know it's um, Swedenborg was some guy from the 1700s and he one day became enlightened and he was super duper intelligent. One day he became enlightened on spiritual information and he wrote many books, and I, I like listening to their videos. I don't really watch them too much, but I kind of listen to them in the background. Uh, them explaining like the Bible and breaking things down, just point by point, piece by piece, and it's, it's it still relates to today. Um, and it's just more information, you know. I'm not just gonna accept what one person tells me. As, as the only truth. Because then I'm, I'm limiting myself at that point. I'm going to investigate, find more information, and I don't have to trust and believe everything. And I learned that. I learned that in, in, when I was at Mizzou. I had this really stupid experience that, you know, I, I regret failing anthropology my first time taking it. Now, I was a freshman at Mizzou in 1989. I took anthropology, which is the study of man. The first thing that man told us, and I'm in a like a auditorium type classroom, 300 people. He's down there on this floor stage or whatever. First thing he said is, uh -oh, "We humans were derived from apes." First off, he then pissed me off from ape. <laughs> so, ain't no room calling me no monkey. So, I was mad. And I, I took offense to it. And I refused to learn. Now, being stupid and not understanding how you gotta pay for college. So, not really getting that. I came from the inner city. Nobody was really talking college back then from the high school I went to. You know, either the ones got the, 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 the sports scholarships or the one girl who's super duper intelligent. She had a full ride. The, the guidance counselor spent a lot of time with her. And she's one of my friends on Facebook. I'm so super proud of her. But they, they didn't spend a lot of time with me. So I didn't get the fact that, you know, I take this class, I fail it. I got a, first of all, I got a bad mark on my transcript. Second, if I, if I need this class, I got to take it again. I didn't even need the class. What the heck was I expecting my money? 
<laughs> so I got an F the first time. But after after the semester was over, now didn't study nothing, refused to learn it. After the semester was over, which they got paid for, the teacher called me to his office and he sat me down and he said, you didn't do any work. I was 17 years old. Okay. <laughs> I had never experienced that type of lifestyle before. <laughs> but I had a good time. And the people who know me from that time in my life, they know I had a good time. Okay, I was free to be, be myself back then. Just 25,000 people looking at you. Can you please step away? I don't want to look at that right now. Anyway, um, so what happened? Um, they, they, I, I I refused to learn. So nobody 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 told me, you know, that I was wasting my money at that point. So I went I went to his office and he sat me down and he said, Miss Matron, I want to explain to you or I first off I want to ask you, why didn't you do any work? I was like, You called me a monkey. <laughs> and he said, No, no, no. That's not what I was trying to express to you. I said, well, what was it that you were trying to get me to understand? He said, first off, you have to understand the purpose of this. You're here to learn. This is the information I want you to learn. I said, but you're trying to make me believe I was a monkey and, or, or my people came from apes or whatever. He said, no, I want you to learn that this is the theory. That doesn't mean you have to believe it. That changed my life. You know, I I didn't have to believe it. I just needed to learn it. Okay. And I did my best to pass the class. Took it again. I got a B. The damage was done. I paid for it twice. You know, but uh, he taught me a lesson. All right. And so my message with this. If you don't believe it, that's up to you. You know, I believe it. Um, there's information out there to learn and just to be knowledgeable about the what else is out there. So that's that's what I'm trying to relate. What else is out there? I'm opening my mind to receive more information. And if that information is delivered to me via my baby from God, which is bringing me closer to God, bringing me closer to God, that's the most important thing, to be closer to God. That's all I have. Um, if you watch this, you know, I appreciate it. It was for you. You don't have to be sad, you know. And part of my issue was I gotta wait 50 years so I can see my baby again. No, I don't. I can communicate with her anytime I want to. That's that's good. That's how. That's what makes me happy right there. You know, I don't have to wait for the rest of my life in order to see her again. It's, I can see her anytime I want to. God willing. Thank you very much, everybody. I love you. Love you. I love God. I love my baby doll. <sighs> Open your minds. Open, become woke, like my mama said. I say it's an awakening. And you can all smile through this. And anybody wants to talk to me about it? I don't mind sharing. I ain't got nothing to hide. Um, apparently, if I made it through this, I am very uninhibited about this topic. All right? Love you. Bye. -bye.